Yeah. So if we could start with like, just what are, th- what are some things that you see that people like maybe when it comes to VAs that like right away, you're like, this is a huge onboarding mistake. Yeah. So before we talk about onboarding, I just want to kind of, cause you mentioned mistakes. So before that we get, there, there's three levels of people that you can hire. You've got followers, you've got doers and you've got experts. So yes. when I'm talking about virtual assistants, I'm talking about followers. They might have years of experience. I might hire a VA with 10 years of customer service experience, but the way someone else does customer service is different than how I do customer service. I need to have SOPs. I need to teach them my way to do something. The, the doers, they're freelancers, writers, graphic designers, video editors. I'm not teaching someone to be a graphic designer, but they're not consulting with me either. They're there to do that one thing at a high level and I'm hiring them project-based. I can bring them company to company. I can build a Rolodex of different designers to go to for different things, but that's where the doers are. And then the experts, the agencies, consultants, coaches, whatever, they come in with their own systems, their own process. You're not teaching them your SOP. They come in with their own thing because you can't master everything in business. And at some point, you're going to have to hire an expert to come in with their skill set. So when we're talking about onboarding, this is strictly for hiring virtual assistants, hiring the followers. And for me, there's there's four stages of hiring that we talk about in outsource school. So there's interviewing onboarding, training, and managing. So if we've already done the interview and we can go back and talk about that if you want, when you're onboarding them, we call it our SICK method, S-I-C-C. And that stands for schedule, issues, communication, and culture. And this is a 20 minute meeting, could be a little longer, could be a little less, that you have after you've had a good interview, but before they start on day one. And this is where a lot of entrepreneurs that they skip this step. And every time you hear that horror story, that VA disappearing or the VA doesn't have the right communication skills or they have a computer issues all the time, it's almost always because the entrepreneur did not spend the time to actually onboard this virtual assistant. And when we're onboarding them, we're going through schedule. For example, if I'm asking them to work the graveyard shift, Have they ever worked it before? Are there, is there anything that could get in the way? I'm going through common issues that people have with VAs, computer issues. Do they have a backup computer power issues? Do they have a backup generator personal issues? Are they one personal issue away from not being able to work for a month? And I'm setting the expectation that, Hey, if you lose power or if you lose internet, or if your computer breaks, it's not, Hey, I can't work for the next two months. It's no, you're going somewhere to work or you, you're, you're borrowing a computer, whatever it is. Um, We go through communication and the different channels we use, making sure we have a backup and emergency contact information. And we go through the the culture that they're going to get into. Every business culture is different. You might be a little bit more cutthroat or relaxed or high stress or whatever it is. And you want someone to know what they're getting into. So after we've gone through these things and we've dug deeper and made sure that they have these backups and they understand the schedule and, and all of that, we give them a chance to not only ask questions, but also back out. We would much rather the person says, hey, your expectations are too high. This this culture isn't really what I want. Actually, I thought about it. The schedule probably won't work for me long term. We want that. We would rather the person backs out than to take the job. We invest time, money, and effort into them only to find out three months later that their computer's crummy or their, the schedule doesn't work. For sure. Yeah. I love how you laid that out. And like you have that so systematized. Yeah, it, it's 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 try, we're trying to make it plug and play, and and that's kind of the the beauty of outdoor school is like we've got people in there who've hired five hundred plus VAs, and but they they're missing onboarding, so they take the onboarding and plug it in, or you get someone new like I was back in the day, and I I had no idea what I was doing. I was making up interview questions on the spot. I didn't really have a hiring process. I did definitely didn't know how to run meetings or fire someone, and and it's just step by step. Hey, if this situation happens. This is what you do. These are the questions you ask in what order. These are the answers you're looking for. This is how you fire someone. Step one, two, three, you're fired. You tell the team. And that's how we tried to lay it out. 